channel. I'm Veronica with Nurturing Connections Homeschool, where I share resources, tools, and tips to help you connect with what matters most. Now, right now, I am homeschooling three of our children. I have an eighth grader, um, a fifth grader, and a second grader. So we've been homeschooling now for over 10 years. We were homeschooling even before we knew we were homeschooling. And when we decided to take that leap of faith and try it out, we always went in with, well, we'll just see how this year goes and move forward. And here we are 10 years later and loving it and really just seeing the fruit of, of all of that. So I wanna welcome you here. Um, today we are talking about chores. So chores is something that I have personally struggled with over those 10 years, over the course of those 10 years. Chores is something that um, I was very inconsistent with. I struggled with um, the accountability piece. I struggled with just finding the time to do it, with juggling homeschool and meals and extracurricular things and just all the things that come with homeschooling and being a wife and a mother. It was a struggle for me. It was something that I didn't have good systems in place early on. I didn't have good rhythms going on. And I basically just had to learn as I went. And so now after all this time and just kind of putting it together, those pieces, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on that a bit. I wanted to take a moment to share what's been working for us, share a little bit about what our struggles were, just in case it's something you could relate to and um, hopefully give you some resources or some encouragement along the way and ideas to help you move forward with chores and keeping your home orderly. But one of the first reasons why it may be hard to maintain your home and stay on top of those chores is because you're too busy. That was something that I've fallen into during different seasons where we just have too much on our plate. We're here, we're there, we're going on field trips, we're going to extracurricular activities, and it's a lot of fun, but if it keeps us from maintaining our home, then it's something that we would have to reevaluate. We'd have to kind of take a step back and say, okay, this is also important, and this is something that we want to prioritize. It's the stewardship of our home and helping the kids to see the value of our home, the blessing of our home and how we maintain it and take care of it and how it's a loving thing to do, not only to have an orderly home to enjoy, but so that we can welcome others in for hospitality, so we can bless daddy who works so hard to, to give us all of these things. And so it's just an act of love and kindness and it was a priority to us and so so we wanted to be really, really intentional about designating time each day for maintaining our home and doing our chores. Um, we've cut back wherever we needed to cut back or we've kind of shuffled things around. We might double up chores on one day in order to make time for something special on another day. And that's okay. But the main thing is just to be aware of that. It's so easy to get caught up in all the homeschool things that we forget the home part of our school and just really making our home a warm, inviting, and orderly place for our homeschools to thrive and our children to thrive, our marriages and so forth. You know, it's really difficult to homeschool in a space that is cluttered, in a space that is dirty, in a space that has stuff all over and, um, and it can really impact your child's ability to sit and be able to work and to focus. And so you'll want to keep that in mind and also share that with your kids. Share why it's important with your kids so that they can then take that ownership in maintaining their spaces and the home at large. Um, another reason it may be challenging is that it could be boring. <laughs> home, home chores is not very exciting. It's not as fun as going to play sports somewhere. It's not as fun as going to play with friends. And so because it's so mundane, because it's so boring, a lot of times it's something that can easily be pushed to the back burner. And so we want to make sure that we teach our children that self-discipline to do the boring things. You know, there's such, um, there's such a parallel here with even homeschooling. We have gotten to the place in, in education where everything has to be hands-on and dynamic and, you know, go big. And, um, it gets to the point where, 
we no longer see the value of just an authentic, genuine, meaningful conversation with someone or just reading a really good piece of literature and taking the time to sit with it and, and process through it. And so we want our kids to know that it's okay to be bored. It's okay when things aren't flashy and fun all the time. It develops self-discipline in us, work ethic. It helps us to be more creative at times. And so the boredom piece is something that we ourselves have to overcome. I know I struggled with that. I would make all the charts and and the schedules and everything else for chores and then nothing else would happen because I had more fun making the charts than actually implementing them. And so I personally had to learn to overcome that barrier and just get it done. Just do it, just do it. Have a designated time, put on that timer, if you will, and just get it done. Move past that boredom and helping the kids to do that as well is extremely important because most things in life are mundane. And it's really getting to that place where we find the meaning in that mundane that we can truly thrive and find the purpose in, in whatever our calling is. Um, one of the scriptures that I share with the kids a lot is work heartily as unto the Lord. And that's something that is a constant reminder for me as well of why I'm doing things. And it adds that intention to our work and to see it as meaningful and valuable and helping our kids see that too. So um, dealing with boredom and addressing it and having those conversations with kids is important. And then of course, just getting it done is important. Um, I put ADD. <laughs> Okay, so let me kind of explain that a little bit more. Um, a couple of years ago, I was reading through a book on ADHD. And as I'm reading this book, y'all, I'm looking through adult ADD and I'm looking at how it presents itself in females over time and how it's easily missed. And as I'm looking at this checklist, I am literally checking off every single box and I just had this epiphany at that moment and just realized oh my goodness this is me this is what I struggle with this is why I'm so inconsistent this is why it's more exciting for me to create a system than it is to implement the system and knowing that about myself was such an aha for me recognizing that having that awareness is what helped me overcome that barrier. And I share that with you, I'm keeping it real here, just because I've talked to different people in our circle that have dealt with the exact same thing and had no idea why. And so um, a lot can go with that piece right there, but I, I bring it up for that awareness. If that is a personal struggle for you, if you have piles of stuff all over your home, then it could just be that struggle with decision-making, that struggle with problem-solving, that struggle with needing that novelty or mental stimulation to get moving and get going and being aware of it is key to helping you move past it. So for me, some things that I know I need to do is um, I do supplement. I do a focus patch that I put on every day. I try to avoid sugar because sugar will really, really make it difficult for me to focus. Um, I eat just whole foods, real foods, and so forth. I've dealt with a lot of chronic conditions in the past, and so lifestyle changes, diet changes made all the difference in the world for me. And, um, and of course, lifestyle meaning my faith, you know, God and, and have his hand over me and directing my steps and guiding me through that process was just so healing for me spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Um, and so I know the importance of stewarding my body well, just like stewarding our home well. But I also found that for me, you know, writing things down is necessary. I have to have a planner where I write things down because the act of writing things down puts it into my memory. So that is helpful. Um, and then having systems in place where I have that self accountability. I cannot do this until this gets done. And so putting those pieces in place along the way really helps keep me motivated. It helps um, me move past 
what I struggled with. So I share that with you. If you've had those struggles or if you have some tips that you'd like to share, please post them below. I know I'm not the only one out there. Um, and so I'd really, really like to hear if that's some of your experiences as well and how you've been helped so that it can also help others as well. But just those are some main things there of why it may be challenging and some ways to overcome that. Um, part of the boredom piece as well and part of the ADD thing is, you know, just the brain just needs that mental stimulation sometimes in developing those self-disciplines. And so it's perfectly fine to play some music at times or listen to a webinar. Right now, I'm really just loving the webinars on Canon Press. I've been hearing some really good ones by Rachel Jankovic in there. Um, they're good podcasts. I love the Elizabeth Elliott podcast. And then sometimes I just put on my headphones and I make a call. I call somebody I haven't spoken to in a long time. I call a sibling. I call my mom and just talk. And while I'm talking and engaging my mind, I'm working and I'm working and I'm working. And before I know it, I've cleaned the entire bathroom and um, I got it done. And I also was able to reach out to someone I love. So just some ideas and tips for overcoming that of why it may be hard once you have those pieces in place or you've recognized your own barriers, then the next thing is actually putting it into practice. So for us in the little years, chores looked very different than they do now. In the little years, it was more of my tag along buddies. So we would do chores room by room. And so I kind of close that door and everybody's in the bedroom and then I'd give everybody a task to do together. So the little one would be wiping down the baseboards, for example, and the middle one would be dusting the furniture and then I'd be coming around the back end with polishing the furniture and the other one would help with vacuuming or whatever it was. We were all working together in one space and so all of us were doing something and I had our hand in making that space more beautiful, more orderly, cleaner and so forth. Now, as they grew up, then I let them be a little bit more independent with their chores because they've already, they had already had that practice with me alongside them, that apprenticeship, if you will. I had already taught them how to clean the baseboards and I taught them how to dust the furniture, how to polish the furniture, how to vacuum the room, how to change the sheets. And so once they got to that place of independence, then it came to be something that was a part of their daily routine. So I put it on their, their chores on their charts and it was something that they were expected to do by the end of the day. What's ultimately worked for me though, instead of having individual charts, was having a, or is having a big grid just like this. And so this just has days one, two, three, four, five, six, because we take off on the seventh day. And I just put all of our chores there by person. So the first column is my column, the second one is for our son, the third is one of my daughters, and the fourth, is my youngest daughter. And so on day one, for example, I'm responsible for my our master suite, if you will. I vacuum everything, the bathroom, the closet, and our bedroom. I clean our toilet, our sink, and the tub. Meanwhile, my son is wiping down his sink, his mirror, and around the toilet area. And he's responsible for taking out the trash bin because they collect it on Tuesdays. My daughter um, wipes down her sink and mirror as well, kind of the cabinets, all of that. She restocks the toilet paper in their restroom, and then she empties out the cat litter box. And then the youngest one is working along alongside big sister. She's tidying up the bathroom. She's taking out any toys that have accumulated in their shoes, dirty clothes, whatever's been kind of tucked into cabinets, which we're working on right now, um, and putting everything back in its place and organizing those drawers as well. And then she sweeps the schoolroom and the library. And so that chore of sweeping then gets pushed on to another person the next day and they kind of just rotate through that. But it goes on from there. And um, we have things like Tuesdays, we just started washing and cleaning our sheets. So Tuesday mornings, we all strip off the sheets and go dump them in the laundry room. And I take care of that while they replace them. Um, I'm responsible for dusting my bedroom and the toy room. My son cleans his tub on that day and brings in the trash bin. My daughter sweeps the school room and all the wooden living areas by that point. They're pretty, um, get pretty dirty. And so she takes care of that. And the little one is again, tag teaming with her. She's going behind her and tidying up the school room, tidying up the library and just putting things back in their place as well. 
Day three, I am now changing to my zone cleaning day. So I'm gonna pause there for just a bit because zone cleaning is what we would talk about when we talk about our deep cleaning. So deep cleaning is just those chores that we don't necessarily have to do every single week or month even, but it's something that has to be addressed at least every quarter in our home. Now, some people call it spring cleaning and fall cleaning. I find that I have to do it about three times to four times a year to keep on top of things. So for those particular chores, I just have a printout like this and it is room by room. And so I just made a list of everything that needs to happen in that room. So for example, in the toy room, they have to dust the furniture, clean out any cobwebs, clean the windows, dust the blinds, dust the baseboards, clear the window seat, organize the shelves, purge all the old toys out because they reproduce somehow, um, dust the decor and the frames, and then add personal touches, whatever season we're in at that time, you know, adding those little pieces in there that just make it more um, inviting and exciting. And I just go on and on and on. So in the bedrooms, I'll put, you know, purge out the, the dressers, purge out the closets, go through the cabinets. And I try to break it down into little chunks because we're usually working with a small amount of time. And so we want that sense of victory and accomplishment after we've done it. And so if I have something like clean the room, well, goodness, I could work for an hour and maybe just get through half of it and I still can't check off that box. So. This just keeps them motivated. It keeps me motivated and moving forward, taking those steps forward, even when I can't do it all in one day. Now, I made a list of all these things and basically on zone cleaning day, we each have one. We set the timer for 15 to 20 minutes. We have this big guy right here that helps us do that. And um, we have some little ones as well for the kids. And basically they just find something they can do and they just start checking them off here and highlighting them. And the goal is to get through everything at least within three months. Sometimes we go into that fourth month if we need to, but we get that deep cleaning done consistently enough that the house never feels so stuffy and gross or over cluttered and just, um, unable to to sustain all of our activities that we have going on in the home. So that's something that's been helpful is that deep cleaning piece. I like to just do it on regular paper and highlight. I know some people laminate and take it off at the end, but I don't know. That's just my personal preference there. Um, so my zone cleaning day is Wednesdays. I have a little bit more time on those days, on that day. And so I find that it's helpful that I can just set my timer and get to work on something big. My daughters have zone cleaning on Fridays and so does my son. Actually, I just moved it to Fridays. So Fridays are usually an easier day for us. And so they have a little bit of that extra time to get that done. But anyway, we have everything on here from watering the trees, tidying up, dusting, sweeping. I do a lot of vacuuming. I like vacuuming, uh, mopping, of course, and all the other things. Um, the only recent change we've done is the laundry. I had my son doing laundry on Tuesdays and the da my daughter's on Thursdays. And I found that that was just not working because some of their clothes was mixed up. So we had piles of laundry everywhere or in the mudroom. And then Let's say we had an event on Thursday, which is usually a busy day for us. Then we had that pile carry over till Saturdays. So I bumped all that to Saturdays. They, whoever wakes up first and gets their laundry in first gets to go first. And then the other person just waits and then they all fold their clothes, sometimes watch a video or something like that just to make it um, a little more enjoyable. But putting in the laundry, folding it and putting away is now their responsibility. I have coached them through it. I've watched them, I've warned them and shared with them all the specifics having to do with that. And now it's something that they can take care of on their own, which is really, really nice. Now, what I've used here, these are magnetic envelopes, if you will. These are laminated, if you, I guess laminated pockets. I can link it below if you wanna check it out. But I just stick in the paper, so when I adjust it, reprint these out, I just stick it in here. And then as you can see, it's so easy to just erase and just use a dry erase marker as we are um, 
completing our chores. What I love about this too is that it's easy for me to see at a glance what the kids have done and what they still need to do. And then I can work in that accountability, accountability piece. See, that's the most important part of being consistent with chores. If they just mark it off, and it happened early on, they would just mark it, I did it, and then I'd go check, and I'd realize, nope, toilet paper's not restocked, nope, you didn't wipe this down, and if I didn't just correct it right then and there, or modeled it for them, or showed them how to do it better, um, or more efficiently, then sometimes it got done halfway. And so, I had to be very, very consistent about catching those things on that day and not three days later when it was already too late. Now, the accountability piece that we have for the kids is that they cannot do anything else until the chores are done and done well. So if they wanna go play with friends, if they wanna go play, if they wanna go outside, ride their bikes, watch TV, they get about an hour of screen time a day. Um, so that's something that's an incentive for them. But if those things, if the chores didn't get done, then those things don't happen. And so that is usually a key motivator to get it done and to get it done right the first time because if not, mom has to call them back in. And at that point, friends are here, they're outside and they're having to come back in and, and correct their, their chores. Um, that's given them reason enough to do it right the first time. So that's what's worked for us as a motivator, as a key motivator. It's worked for me personally to keep me moving forward with the things that I don't necessarily want to do. And then again, having those conversations, we all have to do things we don't want to do. And it's important that we do it well and that we do it as unto the Lord with good intentions and good hearts. So that's what we've done with our chores. We, like I said, our deep cleaning chores. Some of the other pieces like cooking and cleaning the kitchen, we all just do that together. I cook, sometimes we do cook with mom as I've, I've shared here in the past. Um, in the evenings, everybody has a role. Everybody, somebody sweeps, somebody wipes down the table and um, helps with the dishes. In the mornings, all the dishes are in the dishwasher. They all empty it out together. One person sets the napkins, one person sets the silverware and so forth. So we all just kind of have our things that we do to contribute to our meals and to our kitchen time. Um, so I don't have those necessarily written down here, but there's still expectations that we set. And again, it goes back to you're part of this family. This is our home and we serve one another in love. So that's how um, how it's come together for us. But anyways, those are the main things. We do have morning routines and the little ones still have their morning routine charts. I've shared in the past a video on morning routines. So I'm not gonna go into that as much here other than to say that I do have my own morning routines as well. So let me share that with you. So on the other side of our refrigerator, I have another one of these magnetic pockets where I have all of my routines. Now, when I first put all this together, I sincerely needed to look at it throughout the day. I mean, I was reading, okay, what do I need to do next? Oh, this is my time, make the bed, wipe down the sink, put the laundry in the washer, and I was just marking it down. But as I did it every single day, then it just became a part of my routine. It was habit. And that's what we ultimately want for the kids is to no longer need this resource, but to move forward um, and do those things automatically. I know sometimes little kids like to come out and they like to walk around in their pajamas. And I'm like, no, 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 let's get into the habit of getting dressed every day and not coming out till we're dressed. Get into the habit of making your bed. You're right there. Get it done. Um, those are habits that I've instilled on in myself and have found them very, very helpful. I always get dressed every day. I always do my makeup and my hair somehow, some way. Um, I always make my bed and putting it down like this is what ultimately helped me make it a habit. Um, other things that go in my routines here, are things like cleaning the thermoses, those get washed out twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. Um, watering the plants, indoor, the indoor plants, Mondays and Thursdays. You know, so again, writing it down really just helps make sure it makes, really helps, really helps make it all happen. I did the same thing for noon chores, like putting the laundry in the dryer, thawing out dinner, preparing lunch, and so forth, after school, and then evening. But the other thing I put on here that has been helpful that 
you might find helpful, is I created a breakfast menu. And so just putting it down on paper and knowing what I'm doing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just takes that mental energy that I would need to think about, okay, what am I gonna make for breakfast? Out, it's gone. I don't have to worry about it. I know exactly what I'm making on that day. That doesn't mean I can't be creative or try new things or replace something with something else, but it means that when all else fails, I have a plan and I know exactly what to do on that day. And I don't have to overthink it and, um, and put more energy into that. So right now it's just a breakfast menu. I, now that I have a lot of these down, I will most likely update this and probably put a lunch menu along with some snacks, some go-to snacks that I will always have on hand and um, will keep in stock just to have that piece in place so that we're not out picking up something when we can have something wholesome and satisfying that's a lot cheaper too. So anyway, that's how we do things um, over the years. It has just helped to fall into that rhythm of chores after school. I will say that I know some people do recommend chores within the day, but when we take breaks throughout the day, the kids just love to get outside, they love to play, they love to laugh, and I just, I cannot, I just can't get it to the point where I'm like, nope, we're gonna do chores in the middle of our school day. So for us personally, it's just something we do afterwards before the fun. So we just use the motto, we work hard to play hard, and that keeps us on track and moving forward. So anyway, that's all I got. If you have any other tips you'd like to share, please share them below. Or if you have any questions on any of this and want me to share a little bit further, I'd love to hear your questions as well. So drop them below. Please give me a thumbs up on your way out. And thanks for visiting. I'll see you next time.